cases there are some uh, glitches here and there, but uh, hopefully that will make the talk even better. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'm Bowen, head of protocol at Pagoda. Today I want to talk about protocol innovations powering the bus. So if you have been around this week uh, and have been to any of the near talks, you've probably seen the word bus being uh, spoken a couple of times. You might wonder what that is. Uh, if you don't know, uh, this is a one slide refresher. So bus stands for blockchain operating system. Uh, it is just a common layer for people to discover and browsing open web experiences that's compatible with any blockchain. So this is uh, basically an entire stack that goes uh, from the uh, bottom most layer, the compute layer, uh, where there's different blockchains like Near or Serum, and up to the data platform layer where people can have uh, data APIs to get access to data. And then the discovery layer, which is more like a front end uh, a browser that leads to different experiences um, like search recommendations, chat, uh, developer console, and so on and so forth. Uh, but in this talk specifically, I want to focus more on how the near protocols support the boss. Um, as one of the uh, core or fundamental components of the blockchain operating system, uh, the near protocol has some of the uh, defining features uh, that makes it um, a very good compute layer for the blockchain operating system. Uh, the most important property here is like simplicity. Uh, simplicity here means that it is easy for both end users and developers to use and interact with the blockchain. Uh, if you were around when Alex was talking about the uh, UX problems uh, that we're facing in the Web3 today, uh, this is exactly what we're thinking about um, uh, when we develop the near protocol and it's something that we care about very deeply. Uh, because in our mind, without uh, build a protocol that's easy for both the end users to use and also the developers to build on, then everything else doesn't matter. You can build the uh, fastest, most performant blockchain in the world, but none of that would really matter if there's no one actually using it. Now, assuming that we have a, a very simple to use blockchain, it is also very important that it is secure because otherwise people cannot trust the protocol is their asset. Uh, in addition to that, the protocol should also be scalable enough to meet the growing needs uh, from the number of users. So we have a goal of uh, getting to 10 million monthly active, active users by the end of this year. And the number is only going to grow and we have a goal of getting to 1 billion active users in five years. Uh, and it's very important for the protocol to make sure that it can scale to meet the demand of the users and the user experience don't degrade um, as the protocol scales. So with the high level description set, I want to dive into a specific vertical uh, more deeply today uh, in the uh, blockchain operating system. So this is about onboarding. And before I talk more about how we approach it, I want to first talk about the current reality. Uh, this is uh, based on how uh, the user experience on Nier works currently. So if you're a new user to Nier uh, and you just learn about Nier, uh, usually you go through the following flow. You either land in a wallet because that's how you learn about Nier, or you get redirected to a wallet from the app you're trying to use. And when you log into the app, when you try to use the app, it will, it will say like, well, you need to log into your wallet. And if you don't have a wallet, you get redirected to the wallet to create an, uh, your account. And then you try to do that, realize that, well, you actually need some near tokens. Now, there are several ways you can do that. One is that if the wallet supports it, you can directly buy tokens from within the wallet. But if it doesn't, uh, probably have to get tokens from centralized exchanges or uh, ask a friend to help. Now, after you go through all of that, you can finally create an account and start using the apps. So that is, while that is unique to Near, it is actually uh, pretty similar in the Web3 space. I mean, there are maybe small differences, but overall, um, it's already almost like established paradigm like how a Web3 user gets onboarded. Uh, even though we may take granted uh, for that today, it is actually a lot of hoops to jump through uh, before a new user can start using an app in Web3. And that is sufficient to deter most of the Web2 users from actually trying out any of the adapts in Web3. So what do we think is the uh, ideal workflow? It's actually pretty simple. If we think about how the Web2 apps work today, uh, it's usually the just two steps. A user somehow learns about an app, uh, whether that's through a friend or like they read about it in an article or on some forum, and then they decide to give it a try. Uh, they just go there, open the app, and then start using it right away. Uh, pretty simple. I mean, they may, at some point in the future, need to pay for the app, uh, but usually in the onboarding experience, uh, that's how it works. So what are the uh, obstacles to the ideal flow here? 
uh, we think there are two fundamental obstacles here. One is that uh, users have to pay for transaction fees in near, and also users have to have near in their account to pay for the storage. So those two uh, constraints are actually um, fundamental to the protocol. And while that is uh, somewhat unique to near, I think other blockchains have more or less similar constraint that makes the uh, uh, onboarding flow not as good as what it can be. So what are our solutions to this problem? Uh, it is twofold. One is that we're implementing this feature called um, meta transactions. It is a protocol feature that will allow third parties to pay for transactions of a user, and that third parties you're in an app. And second, there is uh, this protocol feature called zero balance account, which means that uh, under some specific conditions, accounts do not need to maintain any minimum balance uh, for their storage. And if you're a new user, your account, you already meet those requirements. So let's actually dive deeper uh, on the technical level to uh, look, take a look at how those things actually work. So before we talk about meta transactions, let's first take a look at how a, a regular transaction work. Uh, it's pretty simple. A uh, user signs a transaction, they send the transaction to the blockchain, uh, and then the validator will do some validation before that, uh, before they actually include the uh, transaction into the block. Uh, they will check that the user actually has uh, enough balance on their account to pay for the transaction. And, when, uh, and the user is charged when transaction is converted to a receipt, meaning that uh, this is actually executed on chain. So the meta transaction flow is in general pretty similar to the uh, regular transaction flow. The only difference is that instead of uh, sending the uh, signed transaction to the blockchain directly, they send it to a relayer, uh, which actually wraps the transaction in a new transaction and signs that transaction. And then the relayer send the transaction to the blockchain. And then when the transaction is executed, the relayer uh, gets charged. So this is uh, uh, even one step deeper, uh, look at how things work. Uh, so basically, this uh, transaction object on near consists of a bunch of things. And the most important thing here is like the list of actions. And the possible list of possible actions are on the uh, right side. And as you can see, uh, meta transaction is actually just one of them. It's called the delegate action. And here's actually an example of um, how meta transaction actually uh, works. And there's some, uh, some very interesting interactions here as well. Uh, it's uh, probably too small for you actually to see, but let, let me just uh, walk through on the high level. So let's say uh, Alice wants to send 10 USDC to Bob, or to John actually in this example. Uh, but then she doesn't actually have any near. Today, that would just not be possible. Uh, with meta transaction, however, uh, what Alice can do is that uh, she can uh, have this uh, signed delegate action that want, uh, basically includes a function call action that transfers 10 USDC to John. And then she sends this uh, signed delegate action to a relayer. Relayer wraps around that uh, in a transaction sent into the blockchain. And when uh, the transaction gets executed, uh, the uh, uh, meta transaction gets unwrapped and the inner uh, action gets executed. And when that's ac ac executed, it further unwraps itself. And then eventually, the function call action gets executed. And a very, a very interesting thing here is that um, Alice can actually pay the relayer in the exact same uh, meta transaction. So basically, in addition to transferring 10 USDC to John, she can also say, I want to transfer 0.1 USDC to the relayer. And it will get executed in the uh, same transaction. And by the end of the execution, not only John uh, gets 10 USDC, but also the relayer gets 0.1 USDC. So that's uh, how the meta transaction works. And let's take a look at how the other important feature, zero balance account, works. Uh, in order to uh, better understand um, how it works or why it even matters, uh, it's first, um, let's take a look at how storage on your works. So there is this uh, mechanism called storage staking, which means that the account has to lock some near tokens for the uh, storage that it occupies. And that includes the account structure itself. And the price is basically one year for 100 kilobytes of storage. So it's worth noting that um, it is, you're locking near for storage, and you're not actually burning those near, meaning that if you actually clear the storage, you can actually get the near back. So that's um, a way to incentivize people to delete things from the state. Now, what this means for new account is that um, for a new account with one access key, uh, even though that's very small, it still occupies some bytes. And as a result, you need to maintain a minimum balance of 0 0.00182 near. Even though that's a very small amount, 
you still actually need to have some amount of near on your account. And the, the problem here is not about the money, it's actually about the flow of getting near, and that's actually what makes the onboarding flow very complicated. So what the balance account does is it says, well, at the account creation time, we actually reserve a small number of bytes um, in storage for the account so that you don't actually have to pay it later. And the, and the uh, cost for those amount of bytes is actually paid when the account is created. And that's actually paid as part of the um, transaction fee. So what that means is that the new user don't actually have to worry about getting near tokens to maintain their account. And also makes it easy for an application to create accounts for the users because you don't actually need to worry about uh, malicious attacker grinding their faucet. So how does everything uh, come together to uh, make a new experience for the onboarding? Uh, so basically, a, user, a new user visits an app, and through this uh, biometric authentication, um, a key pair is generated locally, and that is actually just the user account. And then the application would pay for the uh, user initial usage of the app as part of the user acquisition costs through meta transactions. And since the user don't actually need to re maintain any balance on their account, they can start using application right away. And it's not that this onboarding experience is good for this app specifically. Uh, it's also great because uh, the user only need to create a new account once, and then they can use a new account uh, for any other application that's on near. So all of that is great uh, and uh, give rise to a very promising onboarding experience. Uh, but uh, I want, also want to talk a bit about some of the more uh, exciting stuff that's uh, on the horizon and how those protocol features actually support the uh, blockchain operating system. So one of the uh, most notable things is account extensions. So today it's very difficult to compose um, different account modules together. Uh, let's say uh, you, you want to have more customized control of your account and you want to have both a multi-seek and let's say a proxy contract to have very uh, customized control of your own account. Today the way to do that is pretty much like you create a new smart contract out of those two and you have to deploy that to your account. It is both very expensive and also time consuming. Uh, if we can have those account module deployed globally, uh, then it's very cheap for users to do that and also very convenient. Another thing is that uh, we want to provide primitives um, for smart contracts to scale beyond one shard. Uh, today, even though NIR is very well known for uh, sharding, scaling, uh, being able to scale linearly with number of shards, smart contracts themselves don't necessarily take full advantage of that. And we want to make sure that even if a smart contract gets, say, um, 100 million users, it's still um, very easy for them to handle that. And the way we, we do it is basically to provide the primitive that allow developers to easily shard the smart, smart contract if they want to. Uh, finally, um, we know that uh, while the uh, asynchronous execution environment on NIR uh, is what al allows us to have the uh, scalability we have today and gives rise to our success, uh, it also creates some problems for some applications, especially the DeFi ones, uh, where composability and safety is very important. So we're also thinking about uh, different ways to uh, make that experience uh, simpler for people, uh, including different ways to do uh, create a synchronous execution environment, ranging from a synchronous execution vault to more synchronous sharding. So yeah, uh, those are some of the uh, very exciting stuff uh, that's on the horizon. And I talk a lot about the protocol features and how it supports the uh, blockchain operating system. But I think it's uh, great for everyone to try themselves. So uh, please check out alpha.near.org. This is the, uh, one of the gateways to the blockchain operating system. And if you're working on the hack zone, uh, please check out boss.gg. Uh, this is one of the uh, gateways that allow people to build uh, Ethereum applications on Near. And yeah, that's it for my talk. Thanks.